Hi, my name's Rick, and this is the only time you'll ever see my face. I'm going to take you through project builds of RC airplanes. I figured you might want to know who you're listening to, so I'll give you one minute, a face shot, and then off to build some really cool project hobbies. Uh, the first one I'm going to post is going to be over the course of the next couple of months. It's the UAV MQ-9 Raptor. Uh, it's got an 8 foot wingspan and I bought it off of eBay. Uh, it's made by uh, ProJet Models. ProJet, they actually make the model itself. I bought it from a guy on eBay for a crazy good deal. And uh, this model's made in China, so you get what you pay for. And I took the risk to buy it thinking that it would be a great airplane, and it, it was a pretty good one. Um, or it is a pretty good one. There's, like most models, you buy as ARFs or uh, RTFs. Uh, they have flaws here and there. So if you want a perfect model, you build it yourself. So I'm going to take you on a tour. Uh, hopefully my build can be a tutorial to others. Um, and good luck. So this is the MQ-9 Raptor. And right out of the box, it doesn't come assembled like this, obviously. I have uh, already thrown the lower or the rear gear on it. Uh, these are fiberglass. The struts are and they're fairly strong. I actually uh, put them in a bench test and they took uh, 200 pounds a piece before I, or eat one. I only tested one, but it took 200 pounds of uh, pressure force before I started hearing things snap, crackle, and pop. So they are pretty strong nonetheless. Uh, you'll recognize right off the bat, for those of you that have bought this model, those are not the original wheels. <laughs> The ones that came with the plane itself are 55 millimeter plastic hub, um, real piece of trash really, it's a junk wheel. It's got about 3 eighths of an inch of ground clearance from the end of the strut to the outside tip of the tire over here. Uh, so I went ahead and I bought a 3 inch aluminum hub wheel from Hobby King. and it's a mildly soft wheel. It's not hard by any means, but I wanted something pretty soft. Uh, this airplane is going to have a full telemetry system and and uh, camera system on board. So I wanted it to be able to induce a little bit of the shock when it touched down. So anyway, one of the first things other than the landing gear right off the bat are the canopy magnets. Um, in the older project kits you could buy you had to install the magnets and they, they come installed now um, they're not a very good magnet you can see it's it doesn't take much to I hope that simulates in the video but it, it really just doesn't take much to push that off and I'm afraid that it's gonna blow off going down the going down the taxiway or even up in the air so what I did was bought off eBay some neodymium magnets half inch by eighth inch thick round and I've already glued the back canopy together and you can see the magnet underneath there those are the magnets that I've added and uh, then I went ahead and added them up here on the top side too and I just left the factory magnets in there you know it's it, it weakened the neodymium ones a little bit pushing it through uh, the two other magnets but these magnets are so strong that I don't think you'd want to just use the neodymium to be honest they are I mean watch they really, I mean, you, you, you can pick the whole airplane right up off the ground, and I suspect you're going to be able to, even when it weighs 
you know, four or five more pounds. But uh, the easiest way to get it off is to just slide it sideways. And it's just crazy powerful, these magnets are. So anyway, I rec totally recommend that you upgrade your magnets right off the bat. Uh, in the kit, there's a steel motor plate. I absolutely recommend you use it. On the back of the plane itself, it's just the fiberglass. Inside, uh, they, did, they did throw a piece of wood in there. But uh, if you're going to use a motor with any amount of power, I definitely recommend sandwiching that wood and steel together. And you'll see that when I install the engine into this one here. I am going to gut these servo rod tubes out of here. I'm not going to use them. The elevators in the back here, as well as the rudder, are going to be powered uh, by uh, high tech uh, 5285MG servos. They're micros. They're. Uh, 100 torque inch or 100 ounce inch of torque sorry I'm getting rid of, I'm not going to use these either and, and and the entire bay up front here in the nose is going to be completely modified I'm cutting out all of this stuff here I'm going to use a a uh, Servo City Servotic gearbox up front here that's going to uh, pan the camera and uh, I've got a tilt set up that I copied off of a guy on the internet. It seemed like he had a pretty good design and and uh, cost me pennies really to make. Um, all this is gonna pretty much get gutted out. I'm probably you know I I'm not sure how I'm gonna go about it yet, but you'll all go along for the ride. Um, it will have a a uh, 5.8 gigahertz CCTV. Uh, it's going to have a 640 camera in it with a uh, a uh, automatic iris, but it'll be a manual a, a manual zoom from 3.3 to 9 millimeter lens. Uh, I think that'll be a good thing. And uh, back in in the bay, back in here is where I'll plant my camera uh, transmitter. It's, I'm excited to build it. I've ordered just about everything for it this is my uh, Christmas present to myself this year and uh, I don't expect I'll be flying it until probably February or March but anyway there's lots of room inside the canopies that guys could add stuff but I'm actually gonna gonna uh, glue in some mesh in here that uh, will allow air to actually blow through here I'm mounting my motor on the inside I'm going to run the Cobra uh, 412012. It's a 1000 watt 910 kV motor. I'm going to swing a uh, 11 by 7 three blade prop and an aluminum balance cone on the end, a spinner. And uh, I, Cobra is, is a really cool motor as an outrunner. They actually make a fan for their, for their uh, outrunners that you, it bolts right to the, uh, uh, the armature side of the outrunner and uh, it creates a ton of suction for a motor turning 10,000 rpm so that goes back to why I'm gonna I'm actually gonna glue some induction screen right here and in the back I'm gonna clean that up so it's a little more uh, round or you know so it looks a little better I guess what I'm saying we'll clean it all up and it'll actually induct air through here right through and and out here that way I'm pulling off heat from the motor the ESC is going to be back here as well so will the BEC uh, they all require a, some somewhat of airflow under a certain amount of power so it's just good to have air on it up front again you know uh, I'm not going to use these I'm not going to use these servo bays here I'm going to go micro a single for steering only and then I'll run two micro server servos for the elevators and I'll program them uh, for throw and dead band to be equal. A rudder servo will be a micro. It'll be down uh, probably back in this area right here. Throwing that rudder this way and that way. Elevators, same. Uh, there's not a lot of room back here in the back to work with. Uh, there is a pretty hollow can of, uh, area I should say right up here 
and uh, I'll probably utilize that and this is coming out I'm sure uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to set everything up yet but uh, it'll be a fun ride I hope you guys enjoy this build um, this is something new I'm doing video wise I've never documented any of my RC builds before but uh, this is going to be uh, plane number 44 that I've built and uh, I'll have videos uh, in the future of, of all of them so thanks for watching and uh, hopefully the next video is a little more exciting I just wanted to kind of tune you into the airplane see what uh, you're up against as a builder and and uh, kind of get you ready the next videos will be uh, actual building videos thanks